We are live. Welcome to the Truth Seekers meeting. Thank you all for coming. Uh, we're still waiting for one of our speakers to show up. And so, but we're just going to, we're just going to chat amongst ourselves until that happens. And uh, you can uh, uh, post a message in the chat room and join us. So well, I'll just say, hey, Brother Jody, what's going on? I will uh, try to call him and see where he's at. Okay, we'll, we'll let you be on mute then. All righty then. Sam, what have you been up to? Oh, just surviving by the grace and mercy, the love and compassion of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And I ask the eternal Son of God, God the Son, the God man, the Father's heart, the eternal command of the Holy Spirit to bless us. I ask the Lord Jesus to fill us with the Holy Spirit, to give me the power of the Holy Spirit to speak truth without error to interpret scripture correctly, to glorify Jesus Christ without bringing shame to Jesus Christ, never dishonoring the Lord Jesus Christ or disowning the Lord Jesus Christ. And I ask the Holy Spirit to bless you, bless Jody, bless your families and your ministry and use you to advance the kingdom of Jesus Christ and to magnify the triune God. So we ask the Lord Jesus to take over the session, our ministries, our lives for his glory. In Jesus' name, we love you, Son of God. Anoint my words to speak for your glory in Jesus' name. So. We're under his grace, brother. Amen. Thank you so much. <clears throat> Since we have a moment, I just want to throw up here on the screen our YouTube channel. We are the disciples of Yahweh in Christ. We have uh, just gotten started and we're, we're coming up. We have several playlists for dealing with uh, Jehovah's Witnesses, Mormons, Islam, and various other uh, things. We have Bible lessons uh, from our Sunday worship service. So please check us out and uh, share that information. We're still waiting for our speaker. And uh, yep. And I want news? to invite. Yep. Or, uh, can you hear me, brother? Yes. Yeah. yeah. I just want to say I want to invite the folks on our channel to announce this discussion on your social media pages. And hopefully, by the grace of Jesus Christ. The Lord will cause your subscribers to increase and your viewership to increase in time by his grace for his glory in Jesus' name. So we need more people like you doing this work for the glory of Christ. We need, right. the Lord doesn't need us, but we need right. him. Right. An honor for the Lord to use people like us. All right. So don't forget to subscribe as Disciples of YHWH. That's a short abbreviated form of Yahweh. So disciples of YHWH in Christ. And we've got our friend Stacy. How, how you doing today, Stacy? Can, can you hear me? Hello, Stacy. Welcome. I can't hear him. Okay. I'm watching yeah. on the YouTube anyway. There's like a 20 second delay. That's what she, that should be fine. Okay. Yeah. Can y'all hear me? Ah, oh, now we can hear you. Can you hear us? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> How are you doing? Oh, good. man. I am blessed with the joy of the Lord Jesus Christ, man. I mean, you know, I just lift up my arms and praise the Lord Jesus Christ. I appreciate both uh, Stacy, uh, who I'm Facebook friends with. Um, we've talked about meeting, uh, maybe get dinner or something, and also Sam Shimon, who I have <laughs> Fortunately, got to meet in person, and my ministering partner, uh, Scott Walton, we met at Norm Geisler's class. Uh, so, you go to seminary classes, you get to meet good people. <laughs> so, um, so, I am glad each and every one of you that's uh, joining our channel and subscribing to our channel. So, um, uh, would you want to ask the first question, Scott? Well, I, I first want to talk about the, the nature of the discussion we're going to have. We are, this is a discussion, a dialogue, not a debate. In dialogue, that means both sides get to speak. We don't speak over each other. And because, uh, you know, dialogues or discussions can get uh, out of hand, we, we, we've picked a topic and we want to try and stay narrowly on this topic to, you know, the best uh, extent possible. And that is the nature of Jesus. Who is Jesus? What is Jesus by nature and essence? Now, if there are further discussions, obviously there's a lot more ground to cover. We're happy to host another dialogue between these, these two uh, gentlemen at, at another time. 
So, you know, we, we, we certainly can't cover all the issues in, in one meeting, but we do want to start with something that is a point of uh, dissension between the two camps that are represented here. And we do want to thank our speakers for coming out and we, want, we do want to warmly welcome them. And just uh, let's, oh, because Stacy is, is, uh, has the minority view here, I want to give him some time to lay out his understanding of who is Jesus and what is he by nature and how did that change over time? Did he come to exist? Where was he in, uh, you know, in the eternity past? So, you know, take several minutes, uh, uh, Stacy, and tell us your position about Jesus. And we'll try not to interrupt except for clarifying questions. Take it away. All right. <clears throat> yeah. So Jesus is the image of the Father. Um, Jesus was promised at the beginning. This whole thing we call the scriptures is a plan from the Father that he was going to be the Savior of his creation. So at the beginning, um, God starts this promise um, to these two that have fallen in what we call sin. And he tells them in Genesis 3, he's going to take Eve's descendant and crush Satan's head. And that is the beginning of the promise of Christ. Um, that's why Jesus is called the word in John 1, is because the entire Bible is about Jesus. It is a promise. Um, Jesus is, the spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus Christ. All the entire Old Testament is going to be pointing toward this Messiah. But this Messiah is going to be unique in the fact that the Father is going to come in this body who is a spirit. The first thing you got to understand is the Father is the one spirit of Scripture. Um, Ephesians 4 is clear on that. There is only one spirit, and it's omnipresent. He's everywhere. Everything is made through and by him, the Father. So he is going to come. All the prom promises in the Old Testament is about the Father coming in this man and saving um, us from our sins. That's why Jesus is called the high priest in Revelation. He is, the, he is the payment, um, but it's all a promise in the Old Testament. He was the light in the Old Testament. The word was a lamp unto their feet and a light unto their path. What was that light? That light was the promise of salvation. That's why Abraham believed by faith. It was all by faith um, in this coming Messiah that was going to save them from their dead spirits, their, their sins that, that caused them to be dead spiritually. And so Jesus, when he comes on the scene, which Hebrews 1 uh, is very good in explaining, God spoke in many ways in the Old Testament, but in the last days he spoke in the Son. It's always the Father speaking in something in Scripture. The Father's invisible. He's omnipresent. He's invisible. He's never been seen. So that's why he has to do things through beings like messengers and angels and clouds and all kind of different ways. Um, but in the last days, it was in the sun. The last days in scripture is the end of the old covenant. It's from zero to 70 AD when Jesus came um, to end the old covenant and usher in the new covenant during that fourth kingdom promised in Daniel. So here you have Jesus. He's promised. He comes. But the father is the God in him. And Jesus is clear on this, even when he was here. He said, the Father's in me, and the Father does the works. He told uh, Philip, you're looking at the Father. There's no mention of this God, the Son, in Scripture. The whole Trinity is an invention by polytheistic nations um, 1,700 years ago. It was formed over time. So th that's why it's so foreign when you only study Scripture and put all these other books to the side it'll tell you a completely different story. There is only one God, he's the Father. In fact, there's something inconvenient nobody ever brings up. Jesus has a God, and Jesus' is God is the Father. That destroys the entire discussion. Jesus is God is the Father. And the Father, what that means is the Father arranged through Jesus. He's a, he is a man, he died. Gods don't die. Jesus was a man. The The mediator between God and man is the man Christ Jesus. He paid for the sin debt. He was real. He lived a holy life. He listened to the Father. 
Jesus spoke the Father's words. He was the mouthpiece of the Father. He was revealing the Father, as John 1.18 describes. Jesus is, because the Father is invisible, we would not know anything about the Father if it wasn't for Christ. Um, but that's pretty much um, what I'm going to talk about tonight. Okay. All right. Well, one thing I forgot to mention, if you at any time need a scripture put up, I can do that. I have access to uh, things here and I'll just share it up on the screen so we can all see. And, okay, and go through that. Uh, I, I just want to clarify, though, about the nature of Jesus. Can uh, If we go back to eternity past before anything was created, is Jesus there? No, the Father's okay. there. So Jesus first begins to exist at his conception. Absolutely. And he's a man by nature, is that right? Yes. No Not divinity that. in him other the divinity than divinity in him in us. is the Father. The divinity in him is the Father. The fullness, right? The fullness put in Christ was by the Father. The Father's fullness, his spirit. And 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 that happened at his baptism, right? That As happened an at his birth. Oh, at his birth. Okay. Thank yeah, you for clarifying. Absolutely. The Father came in the son in the baby. Yes, absolutely. The Holy Spirit, that's why he's called Son of God. He was born of the Holy Spirit. Right. Okay. A spiritual um, entity that's talking to him, telling him how to live. Um, you know, God is everywhere. He's always anywhere, anytime. He doesn't die. But that body died, and that Jesus was a man, so he died. Um, we know God the Father doesn't die, so there's no way to really explain what happened at the death other than the fact that we know Jesus died and the father raised him up. Um, so, you know, we have to not abandon what scripture teaches just to try to make up stuff. And, and so what is his, his status now after the resurrection? Is he a divine being or a, some kind of in between or still just a, an ordinary man? Well, there again, uh, if you believe in us going to heaven and being real, we're going to see his face, singular. God is going to reign through Christ. There's one Lord in heaven in Revelation 22. It's Jesus reigning. The Father's reigning through him. And that's how we um, have the presence of the Father. And, and that's what it's talking about. It, we're seeing his face, not their face. Jesus is the image. That's the entire point of Jesus, to reveal the Father. All right. Well, that's. I think that's very clear that we've laid out your, your understanding now, Sam, I'd like you to start, and we'll just have a, a dialogue, please. Friendly dialogue. Yeah, no, of course. Uh, he made a lot of assertions, and I need him to clarify. Mm -hmm. Because if you heard him, he said that the Father is in that body. And yet, he says, Jesus is a man and dwelt by the Father's Spirit, and Jesus is the image of God. So I want Stacy to be very clear so I can actually understand what he's saying. Because he said, the Father is Jesus is God. No one talks about that. Well... He was corrected by Anthony Rogers and Matt Slick, and I do talk about it. I've been talking about it for years, but we'll put that aside. So, Stacy, explain to me, when you say the Father is in that body, mm -hmm. is the person of Jesus, is that the Father? In other words, who is animating the body? Is it the Father as Jesus, no. as a man, in the body? Or is Jesus indwelt by the Father, so <laughs> that Jesus is a distinct person from the Father? Well, Jesus is a person. I mean, he lived. He he is a human. Yeah, that's how the Father is the Spirit guiding him. Does a spirit? Jesus said in Luke twenty four thirty nine, a spirit does not have flesh and bones as you see here. So whether see, you believe it, question. I'm not trying to be rude to interrupt you, but you do do this. You don't answer the question directly, and you go to other passages. No, Luke I'm explaining it. All right, let, let me explain my questions. Question. Let me explain well, I'm my questions. My question so you can answer it directly because you're not. I'm no, not, I am answering directly. Is a person a God? Is a person a God? No, they're not. Okay, let me let me repeat my question instead of you talking over me. That man, Jesus, who was talking, was that the Father himself in flesh as a man? Or is Jesus not the same? Because I know you define person differently from what, the way we do, because that's what Matt Slick kept drilling you on in your discussion. What I want to know is, when that man was speaking, when that man was communicating, was that the father speaking? Was that the father communicating? And was that the father's flesh? No, the father is a spirit. Jesus is speaking the father's words as the father talks to him. So how many were working together on earth? Well, the father is the spirit talking to Jesus. 
Jesus is the yeah, man. Who was he's talking doing, as a man? Doing, Jesus is talking. He's speaking the Father's words. So now we got it. So Jesus is indwelt by the Father. He's not the Father. So you have a man, Jesus, and you have the Father. So I just wanted to be clear. When you say the Spirit is in him, so are you saying that it is the Spirit in Jesus that makes Jesus divine? Yeah, well, the Father's divine. The Father's the one divine in Christ. So the Father is the Spirit in Jesus. The Father, yes, Colossians 1, 19. The Father, just like John uh, 14, 7 through 10. Yes, the Father okay, is, you is divine alone. Okay. Bring up Colossians 1, 19, and I want you to show me where it says in Colossians 1, 19, the Father is the Spirit in Jesus. Because you went to Colossians 1, 19. Scott, can you bring that up? Here it is. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell and now do me a favor. Can you bring up just the Greek text real quickly? Uh, sure. Oh, just just the Greek? Yeah. Or do you want the interlinear? Yeah, we'll bring the interlinear for his benefit as well. Okay, yeah. Good. Yeah, of course. Uh, just give me a second here. I don't see 19 here in the Greek. I see 20. Oh. Uh, oh, I'm going to switch. Got to switch screens. All right, here we are at Bible Hub. Colossians 2. I don't know what happened there. Colossians 1, 19, not 2. He didn't oh, say sorry. Uh, All right, 119. Okay, can you show me where the word father is in the Greek? It's, it's you see it, hati en, auto, right? Yudo, kisen, panto, pleroma, katoi, kisai. Can you show me where the word father is there, that the fullness of the father dwells in him? Can you show me uh, that statement? Father's not in that passage. But you just quoted it, saying that the fullness of the father dwells in him, and you said Colossians 1.19. Absolutely. The writer's Paul. Go to Colossians 1.3. God, according to Paul, everywhere in Scripture is the father. That's what I asked, Stacy. In 19, where do you see the word God or father? Okay, let's stop the bull. Let's, go to, let's teach what the writer's saying. This is Paul. He's writing Colossians. Verse 19 comes after verse 3. You got to set the entire letter when you're talking about what he's discussing. According to Paul, verse 3 says, The God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. The and God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is always designated as the Father. Jesus that's not my the question, Lord Christ. You're going on a tangent again. That's not my question. Well, we will, you got to explain that first before you get to 19. Well, you, we will cut the bull because if you go to 2 9, what dwells you Christ pick and not choose. God. You can't pick you're and choose. Over you're talking over me, which you have to do because you can't address my point. Because if you go to Colossians 2.9, it doesn't say God. It says theotetos, theotes, indwells him. Can you tell me what theotes means? Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's the God. That's the God. I mean, no, but look, God is the, means. and God is the Father. Theotes does not mean God. The word God in Greek is theos. What does theotes mean, Stacy? So let's cut the bull. Well, it doesn't matter. It, it means God the Father. He's the deity. No, it does not mean that. Show me any lexicon that says Theotes means God the Father. I don't have God to. We're God. going about the teachings of Scripture. Who yes, is well, the God in Jesus? Scripture. Take his own words. Who is the God in Jesus? The Father. So John you 14, 7 through 10. Okay, Who so is see, the God in Jesus? Verses. You brought up Colossians 119, not me. I yes. Then, now you God, put, God you put his from. fullness in the Son, who is God according to Paul. Verse and yet three, Jesus the Father. fullness fills all creation. Ephesians 1, 23. Go to Ephesians 1, 19 and 23. Hey, go to, go, you got to, we're in Colossians. We are in Colossians. You yes. ran from Colossians and you went no, to. No, I went to chapter 1 to set the foundation. You won't look at the obvious. Yeah, Every yeah. writer says God no, is the Father. The Son more more is Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Over each other. <laughs> Okay, Stacy. Yeah, right. I, 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 uh, you were talking about what Paul says about who God is, and I think so. Yeah. It's legitimate to go to Ephesians. Who God is according to Sam Paul. asked. He's talking okay. over you. One at a time, please. Okay, Sam. What was the point you made? You wanted to make it Ephesians one nineteen. We're talking about the Paul. Then we'll go back to you, Stacy. Oh, Scott, this is what I was trying to make clear. I didn't quote Colossians one nineteen. He brought it up. When I simply asked him, 
Because he misquoted, he said, the fullness of the Father. I simply said, yes. where's the word Father? See, he's talking over me again. So if it's going to be like this, it's going to be chaos. No, go ahead. All right. Okay, so where in Colossians 119 do the words Theos, God, or Father appear? It doesn't. He ran to three, but I told him no, because in 2.9, we're told what the fullness is. It's not the fullness of Theos. It's Theotetas, Theotes, and that means the divine essence. Then he ran to John. So I, I, I don't want to play Bible ping pong. What verse yeah. does he want to focus on so I can nail him on it? Let's cut the bull. You cannot skip. This is a letter. You get, cannot skip what the foundation of the letter says. Who is God according to Paul? It's the Father. Who so is the only God 13. according to Paul? The well, Father. Let's go to Titus 2.13 and see. You can if, go to Ephesians. Let's go to Ephesians 1. Well, no, Same no. Let me quote my verse. Don't tell me what Five. verse to quote. I'm going to quote the verse I want. Titus 2.13. Well, be patient. You don't play Bible. I'm, I want to go to Titus 2.13. Then we're going to go to Ephesians. Of course Ephesians you're going to go there. <laughs> Sam, course, let me ask to, a quick one. It. Sam, do you accept what is said in Colossians 1.3? Of course, God is the Father, but in 19, we're not told what the okay. fullness is. He's twisting oh, it. You, okay. I'm glad you know that, yes. Okay, yeah, but can I make my point without you talking right. over me? Because that means you can't deal with the issue. Go ahead. All right. Be patient. I'll go to your Ephesians 4.6, and it's going to backfire against you. I promise you. Just be patient. Patience. Titus 2.13. Colossians 1.19 simply says, all the fullness dwells in Christ. It doesn't tell us what the fullness is. So then when we go to 2.9, then we're told what the fullness is. The fullness of theotes, the divine essence. So I'm reading Paul in context. He's playing Bible ping pong. But now let's go to Titus 2.13. He went to his verses. Let's go to Titus 2.13. I want to go to my verse. Let's see who God is for Paul. Is it just the Father? And I want Stacy to address this grammatically. Titus 2.13, waiting for our blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Do you believe that, that Jesus Christ is God, or is the Father God who is in Jesus? Yeah, Jesus Christ. Okay, it says the great God and Savior. you got to read all of Titus. The foundation starts in Titus 1, where God is the Savior. Talking about the Father, again, Paul's the writer. Who is the one that returns? Go to Daniel 7, 22, the Father. Well, that's, who, that's who returns. Doesn't see the father. Invisibly. Doesn't the father. Invisibly, God returns. That's why Jesus said, look doesn't for the sign the of my coming. That's why you got to know who Jesus is. Okay, I, I think Jesus you're is returning I, invisibly. This is part of that stop process. With your preterism. Stacey, okay. stop with your preterism. That heresy I can refute it's later. foundational. Daniel 7, 22. I'm going to give him a million bucks to show me in 22 where it said the Father. So you're twisting scripture again. The ancient of days. The Daniel 7, 22. And I'm going to show you the ancient of days is contextually in a minute. The so ancient of days to... came. Can we, can can we, we go to the text and read it? Yeah, here we are. I'm okay. going to back up to 21 to get the sentence. Yeah. As I looked, this horn made war with the saints and prevailed over them until the ancient of days came and judgment was given for the saints of the Most High. And the time came when the saints possessed the kingdom. And now, do, do me a favor, read 25 and 26 as well, or to tw 25 to 27. He shall speak words against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and shall think to change the times and the law, and they shall be given into his hand for a time, times, and half a time. But the court shall sit in judgment, and his dominion shall be taken away to be consumed and destroyed to the end. And the kingdom and the dominion and the greatness of the kingdoms under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High. His kingdom shall be an everlasting kingdom, and all dominions shall serve and obey him. Now, can you open up 26 for him in the interlinear? Oh, sure. Yeah. Give me a minute. Daniel. All right, we're going over to Daniel. Interlinear. Looking for 26. It's going to go backwards, folks. We're in Hebrew. That's right. That's Oops. Fine. You went down here. 26. Here we are. Okay. Now, I want you to highlight. Let's find it here first on the screen. I'm trying to follow you as well. You're in 20. Uh, go to 25. I'm sorry. Go up 25. Oops. Okay, right there. 25. Go up there. Right okay, here. You don't even need to read Hebrew. See, now, do you see that the first occurrence of Most High, Ila'a, do you see it's singular, right? If you show them, show Stacy that it's singular first, so I can say, okay. Adjective, Adjective masculine, determinate. 
Okay, masculine singular. Now show them the second occurrence of most high. It's Elionin. What is it? Masculine plural. It's a plural. It's literally the highest ones. And then show them that again in 27. 27, the most high, masculine plural. Okay. Literally, it says the highest ones. So if I read it contextually, it's not just, quote unquote, God the Father that's coming. It's the highest ones who are coming. Because in the context, the Son of Man and the Ancient of Days are the highest ones. Both of them are coming. Do you agree with that? I just gave you it's plural. No, absolutely not. That's terms of being. Explain the plural. Look at, look, the at, look at the bottom of that verse. Shall serve him, singular. That's one person, him. And him, and him is not in the text, Shall by the way. Shall serve him. It's not in the text. That's in the text I'm looking at. No, it's not. Shall serve no, him. It's not. You're reading it in, in opposite order. Him is before shall serve. It simply says shall serve and obey. His That's kingdom. It. His yes. kingdom. Okay. Explain the plural. God, because Elionine. it's deity. That's in plural sometimes. That's the way they used to speak. It, no, it always he is it. singular. No. He is okay. okay. Keep it can, can, Titus two thirteen. Can you do that, to Scott? Because he ran from Titus two thirteen. Let's go back there again. No, Titus two thirteen. No matter what we do, he's going to ignore the passage and go to a passage that backfires against him. Then he's going to deny it. No, let's, let's go back go to, to Titus two thirteen. Absolutely not. It's not going to go back to Titus two thirteen. All right, here we are. Now, hopefully, you're going to answer this question and not play Bible ping pong with me, Stacey. Let's try it again. Titus two thirteen. The glory of the great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. And to prove that it's Jesus Christ who's a great God and Savior, what will that great God and Savior do? Or what has he done in verse 14? The subject doesn't change. Who gave himself for us to redeem us from all lawlessness and to purify for himself a people for his own possession who are zealous for good works. So if we follow the pronouns and we follow the context, it says the appearing of the great the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself, since you want to play the singular, the himself and the who singular is Jesus Christ, who is identified as a great God and Savior that redeemed us from all lawlessness to purify for himself a people for his own possession who are zealous for good works. So do you now, amen, Paul, and say, I want you to say for everyone to hear, yes, for Paul and me, Jesus is the great God and Savior. The God is in Jesus. That's the whole point. So that's, that's why he's called, Hold on. Why is Jesus called Christ? Let's not let's not ignore his name because he's anointed. He's anointed with the Father. That's who is the God in Jesus. That's the entire point of every letter in in the New Testament. Jesus is called the Christ. Okay, but can you answer the question, Stacy? It I'm says answering the question. I, God is right. the spirit. Jesus is what you see. Right, but it says great God and Savior Jesus Christ. So there is showing Jesus is God in that uh, context. Can you just uh, say, you know, is Jesus God in that context? Well, well was G um when when um Thomas said, uh, my Lord and my God, he's speaking about the Father in Jesus. He's not saying no, that a man standing there is Jesus. No, nor did isn't. a man show up. Go to John 20, 28. Okay, right. hang on, hang on. Uh, before we go away, let Stacy finish. I, I want you to uh, exegete this passage or show us about Titus 2.13. No, before God, we move no. on, tell God, us your take on that, it. Go ahead, one, finish, one, please. One, Scott, do me a favor. Yes, sir. He's not exegeting. He keeps going to other passages. That's why I'm intervening. He no, went to I'm John explaining 20. that passage. What does Christ mean? We can't leave out what it's saying. Christ means anointed. It does. Said that mean already. God. Okay. Do you anoint it. a God? Yes, if God becomes flesh. To uh, become no, flesh. that's ridiculous. Do you anoint like, a God? You say it's ridiculous. It doesn't mean it is. You don't so you anoint a here. God. You do if not God have to you don't flesh, anoint you somebody who's God. God. Stacey, all right. You this is answer your question, guys. Do me a favor. If you all jump on him, he's going to say three against one. Let me answer the question, please. Okay. Yeah. If you jump in, Jody's going to say, see, three, two, be patient, guys. Let me just ask him the okay. question. Let me answer your question. You can say it's ridiculous all you want. I really don't care for your opinion. I want you to prove it scripturally. If God becomes flesh to become the messianic son of David, yes, he can be anointed. And I know what you're referring to because you brought it up. Hebrews 1, 8 to 9, 
which is Psalm 45. If you want us to go Psalm 45, that too will backfire against you. So do you want to go there? Because you still didn't exegete Titus 2.13. You ran to John 20.28. 20, then you brought up the Christ. You don't Again, exegete any passage. Well, you run from every verse I say. Have so I? It's recorded. I stuck with Colossians 1.19. I challenge you. You're I asking showed you in Colossians 1 3, to, okay. according to Paul, who's so God. Is Psalm 45. The uh, tell me what you want to deal with so I can know how to deal with you. Psalm 45? No, let's look at. Um, how about this? Let's look at the clarity of verses. Uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 23 through 28. Sure, let's do it. All right. 1 Corinthians 15, 23. But each in his own order, Christ the first fruits, then at his coming, those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end when he delivers the kingdom to God the Father after destroying every rule and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. For God has put all things in subjection under his feet. But when it says all things are put in subjection, it is plain that he is accepted who put all things in subjection under him. When all things are subjected to him, then the Son himself will also be subjected to him who put all things in subjection under him, that God may be all in all. Ask your question so I can exegete it. Okay, who's God in that passage? God the Father there, right? Of course it is. Okay, who's so what's Christ? your question? Christ, the first fruits, he's... Okay, that's first resurrect. He's the first one resurrected. He hands the kingdom. This is in heaven. Hands the kingdom to God, the God and yeah, Father. What say in heaven? God and Father is over Christ, verse twenty-eight, so that God may be all in all. God is the Father in that yeah, entire you're passage. Not my question: You said heaven. Where does the text say he hands the kingdom to the Father in heaven? Well, you tell me where he handed the kingdom to the Father. Now, you made the assertion. Don't avoid answering the question. You asserted it's in heaven. Where does the text say that? I mean, it doesn't say it's in heaven, but I mean, okay, that's stop where the Father the reigns, text. and that's where Jesus reigns. So No, but no, it doesn't. You don't get into your preterism here. Just go to the point. What question you ask me so I can answer you? So well, here's the, the Okay, here's the deal. Okay, no matter where it reigns, who's God and who's Christ? Well, in this context, it's God the Father. God is the Father. God, of course, it's God the Father. That's who God is in all of Paul's writings. The Father, Christ is anointed. Writing. Does Christ not hand the kingdom to God the Father? Sure. What does that mean, though? That's because God answer? the Father is you over Christ. Who is now? You ask questions. Let me answer you. Let me answer you. This is what you do, Bible ping pong. You take one verse where God is the Father and ignore the other statements where Paul identifies Jesus as God. Now, let me show you that Paul is not like you. He has no problem of referring to the Father as God and the Son as God. And then I'm going to answer to you, answer your objection. Why does the Son hand the kingdom over to the Father and its implications? So let me answer you. Titus 2.13, Jesus is also God for Paul. So it's not just the Father who is God, because the same Paul also identifies Jesus as God. And he does that in Romans 9, verse 5. Can you show him Romans 9? Let me answer the question. Then I'll answer the second part of your question. What does it mean for the Son, the Christ, to hand the kingdom over to God the Father? It doesn't mean what you think, and I'll show you. But now let's go to see the same Paul that you're quoting selectively has no problem saying God is the Father, but so is Jesus the Christ. Because in Romans 9, verse 5, what does it say? To them belong the patriarchs, and from their race according to the flesh is the Christ, who is God over all, blessed forever. Amen. Interestingly, the St. Paul is not like Stacy, who thinks that only the Father is God, because he has no qualms saying that Christ, who according to his flesh is an Israelite, is also the God who reigns supreme over all eternally praised. Which he also then said something similar in Titus 2.13, that Jesus is our great God and Savior, which he still did not answer. Now go to Acts 20.28, 20, the St. Paul. Now in Acts, and if you read, this is Paul speaking to the elders from Ephesus. He's at Miletus. In tw tw Acts 20, 28, who is God there? Acts 20, 28. Pay careful attention to yourselves and to all the flock in which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to care for the church of God, which he obtained with his own blood. Last time I checked, the only one who had blood that he shed to purchase the church was Christ. And here it says, the church of God, which he purchased with his own blood. So go figure. The same Paul who calls the Father God 
has no qualms saying, Jesus is God who shed his blood to purchase the church. Jesus the Christ, who according to his flesh, <clears throat> is an Israelite, who is also the eternally praised God, who reigns supreme over all, being our great God and Savior, who redeemed the people and purified them by his blood to be his possession. So Paul has no problem with the Father and the Son both being God. You have the problem, not Paul. Now, do you want me to answer the other objection? Why does it mean that the Son hands the kingdom to God the Father? Because it's going to backfire against you. Do you want me to answer that? Go ahead, Twisty. Go ahead. Okay, Twisty. All right. If you want me to call it Twisty. All right. Whatever it means, it will not mean that Jesus ceases to reign eternally with the Father. And I'll prove that from Paul and the rest of Scripture. Because like you, I don't believe Scripture contradicts. So let's reread 1 Corinthians 15, 28 carefully. Because whatever it means, it cannot mean that Jesus will stop reigning after he abolishes death. Because the same scriptures, and Paul himself affirms that Jesus will continue to reign forever, even after death is abolished with the Father. And I'll prove that. He didn't stop reigning. I didn't say that, did I? Okay, so then do you agree that Jesus will continue to reign? After death is yeah, abolished? Yeah, he's going he's gonna to reign. He's, well, he's the high priest. I mean, he's our mediator. So do you believe after he hands the kingdom to the Father, he'll still rule with the Father? Yeah, the kingdom is the new is the Father's spirit in us. The new covenant age is God's so you're spirit. You're going to take away so the, the spirit Father. From you? The Father is the spirit in all of us. The new covenant age. That's what it's talking about. All right, let, let's go with what you said. Let's go with what you said. You just said I want everyone to hear what you said. The kingdom is the spirit in us. So according to you, now listen to the implication of your statement. I'm repeating what you said the kingdom is god's spirit in us so according to you at the end when christ hands the kingdom of god that means now he's going to take the spirit out of all of us and hand it back to god so how are you going to live then uh i'm talking the kingdom handing that was done in 70 ad this is not something Get the, the date the, the kingdom not does not end is the spirit in you now it's forever and ever yeah no you just said the kingdom is the spirit in us Christ will hand the kingdom back. That means he's going to now take out the spirit from you. So do you have the spirit in you? Christ gained the kingdom from old covenant Israel, handed the kingdom to the father who is the spirit okay. in us. The spirit of God came down to man. Revelations 21, three. It says That's handed the father to that say, fulfills all prophecy in the old Testament that his spirit will be in us. We'll be his people. He'll be our God. That's the father. You're not answering the question again. I'm agreeing with you. For argument's sake, handing the kingdom to God means the kingdom will be surrendered back to God, given to him. It's not the kingdom being given to you. It says given to him. If the kingdom means the spirit, so according to your interpretation, at 70 AD, the spirit was now given back to God the Father. No one has the spirit, not even you. So what are you doing wasting your time being a Christian? The Spirit came down in 70 AD. You're not listening. No, it, it came down in Pentecost. No, it didn't. That's a different spirit. Where, at, the, where does the, it say different? Prove it. The, the, it was different because the apostles had to lay hands on people to give them the Spirit. It was for a sign. It was not, not the same Peter. feeling as Revelation 21. Go, go, to Acts not. Two. go to Acts 2. Let Peter correct him. Not me. Peter's going that to is a different head. feeling, the same as uh, before Jesus was two. resurrected. He blew on him and gave him the Holy Spirit. Two, sir. So you're going to keep talking over me. Let's see if Peter agrees with you. Let's go to Acts 2. Let Peter put you in your place. Go to Acts 2. Read for I'm me. Not this, I'm not denying Acts 2. Okay. That's a Let type me, of, that is not the same feeling. Scripture. Are you scared That's of the Bible? The Let's feeling. read it. That's not the same Let's feeling. Let's read it. Acts 2, because Peter is going to apply Joel, where God pours out his spirit in all flesh, on Pentecost. Then you're going to need to prove on 70 AD something different took place from Scripture. Go to Acts 2 for me, Scott, and read the first four verses. When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place. And suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. And divided tongues as of fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now, Scott, read 14 to 21 to see what Peter says this fulfilled. 
But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and give ear to my words. For these people are not drunk, as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was uttered through the prophet Joel, and in the last days it shall be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even on my male servants and female servants in those days, I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. I'll go to 21. Okay. And I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the day of the Lord comes, the great and magnificent day. And it shall come to pass that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Okay, so Peter, not you, not me, says that this event on Pentecost fulfilled Joel 2.27 to 32. Now, I'm going to challenge you. Quote the scripture about something taking place on 70 in relation to the spirit that's different from this event. Don't give me your opinion. Give me chapter and verse. Go back to 17. Let me show you something. Right here. Okay. In the last days, I'll pour my spirit out and they will prophesy. Notice that. This is fulfilled. Yes, this is Joel. It's talking about judgment on old covenant Israel. Now, if you go to Daniel 9, there's going to um, the new covenant that's coming will be when prophecy ceases. There, that is different. This is a prophecy right here in Acts 2 about the Spirit coming, which is going to be a sign to Old Covenant Israel of their judgment. Go to Daniel to 70 weeks. Go to 24. All right, this Daniel 9, 24. This is talking about the new covenant that's coming. And notice what it says. Seventy weeks are decreed about your people and your holy city to finish the transgression, to put an end to sin and to atone for iniquity, to bring in everlasting righteousness, to seal both vision and prophet, and to anoint a most holy place. To anoint the most holy place. That's, that's going to be heaven. When is heaven opened up? Oh, when the temple's heaven. destroyed. Hebrews 9.8. Show me where it says nine, eight, this is key. When Scott, to anoint favor, the most holy place, that's heaven. When is the temple? When is when is heaven open and the spirit comes down? When the temple is destroyed. He Hebrews the, nine, eight. doesn't say most holy place. See, he's okay. talking over me and he's not answering my question. All right, number but we want to hear what he says too. Go on. Where does uh -huh. it say heaven? And number two, it doesn't say holy place. That's supplied by the translation. It says anoint the most holy. Show him the Hebrew, please. All right. So you keep twisting scripture with your tradition. No, and it, even yeah. this doesn't say on 70 AD, the spirit will be poured out. Even 927 doesn't say that. It I don't have to. It says in the last days. That's when and Jesus came. Jesus in the last said, days. It started on Pentecost. Hebrews Show him now one. The Hebrew. Show oh, okay. The there we go. Go, We're going to talk over each other. We're going to get nowhere. Go to oh. 924. Now, Stacy, show me the word place. The most holy. Show me is, the most holy place. Right here. Show Kodesh, me where it says Kodeshim. heaven. The most holy is heaven. Show me that in that text that it's heaven. I'm still waiting. Um, to anoint the most holy. Yeah. Okay. Show me where that's the most holy be, is That's heaven. Jesus in heaven. Show me where it says Jesus in heaven. When does he come? Well, who's the, who's the most holy? Don't ask me. Prove your assertion. Well, you said it's the place. When does, this take, the place. when does this take place right here? Ending in this prophecies and the visions. Don't ask me. Answer my question. You made I'm an answering your question. What is Bring nine? What is nine twenty four through twenty seven about? Ushering in the new covenant. What is the new covenant? Hey, are you answer my God's question. Spirit you on us. Covenant. That's the new covenant. Right. Okay, let's go to another question. He's not answering this one. No, right. no, you, you won't listen. This. This is a whole explanation because it's easy. Anthony Rogers. Nobody listens, but you when listen. Does this? Anthony Rogers didn't do nothing but to dodge my stuff. We're yeah, talking about other people. Nobody answers my question, which is exactly like you. You are, you are God's gift to anti-Trinitarianism. We're all scared. We're shaking. Now, you said earlier, you said, let's go back because you don't answer questions. Let's see if you're going to answer this one. You said Jesus the man is indwelt by the Spirit of the Father. So the Spirit in Jesus, that's what's divine, right? The Spirit. And you've said in your debates, the Spirit is the Father. 
Right. And it's blasphemy. You just said, I was watching you with Anthony. You said it's blasphemy to deny that the spirit is the father. That's what you said. I can play the clip. You yeah, said, the, yeah, the spirit is reason. the father. One God, okay. the father. Absolutely. Okay, now, read for him John 15, 26, because I want him to answer this one for me. John 15, 26. Everyone heard? The spirit is the father, and that spirit was in Jesus. But Jesus, the man, is not divine. That spirit is divine, and that spirit is the Father. In John 15, 26, and I hope you don't say this is not the spirit of the Father. I really hope you don't say uh, that. Pay, pay attention to what it says. Yeah, I'm going to give you John 16, 7 and 14, 26. We're going to have field day paying attention. But 26. when the helper comes, when the helper comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father, he will bear witness about me. So, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father. Now, Scott, can you go to John 14, 26 to see who the Spirit is? But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. So, now, I can go to John 14, 16, 17, 16, 7, where Jesus again says he sends a spirit. But I think it's clear. The Father and Jesus send the Holy Spirit, who's the spirit of truth, from the Father to indwell the apostles to bear witness. Now, you nodded your good. So I want you to tell everyone, you believe the Father and the man Jesus send the Father. Jesus sends the Father. The man Jesus sends the Father to indwell the apostles, because you said the Holy Spirit is the Father. Don't backtrack. Go back. To so Jesus okay. the man, send the Father. All right, let me answer. 1526 says the Spirit proceeds from the Father. And that's the Father. Look here. The Spirit proceeds from the Father. Of course it's that's the, Father. the Father. The Father is the one Spirit. And so Jesus sends the Father. Thank you. You believe that? Jesus speaks the Father's words. So here's Jesus speaking the Father's words. He's saying, so I'll Father send it saying, from the Father. This is not Jesus, the, the man that's doing this. He's okay, saying, let me go with, your logic. Let me go with you. Jesus go. speaks the Father's words. He came in the Father's name. That's what uh, 14, 25 and 26 says. Okay. Now, let me, let me go. Let me play your game. So this is the Father speaking. So Jesus speaking the Father's words. So the Father saying, I, the Father, will send the Spirit from the Father. So that's the Father saying, I, the Father, will send the Spirit from the Father, and yet the Spirit is me, the Father. So I am the Father who sends the Spirit from the Father, and that Spirit is basically me, so I am sending myself to you. That's what the verse is saying, according to you. Well, he's speaking the Father's words. He's, I mean, But he's distinguishing himself from the Father. He goes, I will send him from the Father. So that can't be the Father saying that. That has to be Jesus saying, I will send him from the Father. But according to you, that's really the Father saying, I, the Father. Yeah, he's speaking the Father's from words. The Father. Yeah, yeah, I'm fine with that. Exactly. Go to, so when uh, Jesus says, the Father will send him in my name, that's again the Father saying, I will send myself in my own name. Yeah, go to uh, 16. Good. Yeah, you make sense. Good, excellent. No, it's the Father. It, he's revealing the Father. The whole point of Jesus is he's revealing the one true God. That's so when the whole Jesus point. says, I thirst, is that the Father? Because he to, speaks the Father's No, he's word? a human. He's a man. No, wait, wait, wait. No, 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 Stacy. You're not going to play that game. The you word Christ. What is the Father's Christ? words? Let me make my point. Yes, he does. Say, so you're kidding me off. You say he speaks the Father's words. So that means when Jesus said, I thirst, that's the Father's words he's speaking. So that's the Father saying, I thirst. Be consistent. Don't play Bible ping pong with me. No, he's speaking as a human, of course. But no, he speaks the Father's words always, right? Because I'm going to show you. Many he says, times he's always speaking speaks the to words. reveal teachings. That's different. Okay. So is this the man Jesus saying, the Father has told me to tell you, I, the man Jesus, will send the Spirit from the Father? Or is that the Father saying, I will send the Spirit from myself? And the Spirit's actually me. It's Jesus speaking, but he's talking about the Father. Yeah, and he's talking about, I will send him from the Father. So the I is the man, right? Keep reading the sentence. It, the Spirit proceeds yep. from the Father. And But who's sending him the from Father's the Father? The Father's the God that gives out the Spirit because it's his Spirit. 
But who's sending the father? You're not. See, again, you keep doing the straw man. There again, Here's Jesus is speaking the father's words. He okay, reveals, so let's, he's let's revealing, my he's trying to reveal to, to them challenge. who he is. Go to 16, 25. Let's go 30. back to my challenge then. If me, Jesus speaks the father's words, that means when Jesus said, I thirst, those are the father's words too. So that means the father is no, thirsty. that's not how it works. He's trying Thank to reveal you. who he exactly. is. Exactly. So now let's go back to your uh, objection. The father reveals to Jesus what to say. So the father tells Jesus to say, Jesus, you're thirsty, but it's Jesus who's really thirsty, the man. Similarly here, it's the father telling Jesus to reveal, you, Jesus, will send the spirit from me. So that's not the father saying, I, the father, will send the spirit from me. So we're back to my original question, which you still didn't answer. Do you believe the man, Jesus, was authorized by the father to reveal that I, the man, will send the spirit to you, and the Spirit is the Father, so I have the power to send the Father to you. Um, yeah, but that's not... Keep reading. Good. Go, you said, go, yeah. keep, wait a minute. Keep reading. Go 16, 25 through 30. This is a letter. This is a discussion. It continues well, Start on. at 7 first. Start He's at 7 trying first. trying to teach the apostles. Yeah, start at 7 first. Why are you going to 25? Start at 7. Because read this seven. explains what I'm talking about. Yeah, okay, let's... 7 also further explains. Start at 7. Read all the way. Oh, wow. All right. Seven. <laughs> All the he way. He doesn't reveal it in seven. He reveals it in 25 to 30. Can you be patient, Stacy. Let's see what Jesus doesn't okay. reveal. Your opinion doesn't matter. It's what the scriptures say. Let's start at seven. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. Okay, and when he comes... Before you go on, because we're going to go to 2530, because that's going to prove my point where he speaks plainly. I know, but I just want, again, to be clear. Reread seven again. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. Now, I know Stacy believes that it's the man Jesus who's going away, not the father, right? He's going away. So now this Jesus, the man says, I'm going away. And I, whom going away, will send the helper to you. So now, Stacy, please try to convince us. This is the Father saying, I, the Father, will go away. And when I go away, I will send myself back to you as the helper. Yeah, I thought so. Wait a minute. No, I mean, yeah, he's, well, he's, again, he's speaking the Father's words. And then in 25 through 30, He's starting to reveal to, to, to them who he is. Go to 25 to 30. Go to 31, not just 25 30. to 30. He explains it. Verse 25. I have said these things to you in figures of speech. The hour is coming when I will no longer speak to you in figures of speech, but will tell you plainly about the Father. In that day, you will ask in my name, and I do not say to you that I will ask the Father on your behalf. For the Father himself loves you because you have loved me and have believed that I came from God. I came from the Father and have come into the world and now leaving the world and going to the Father. His disciples said, ah, now you are speaking plainly and not using figurative speech. Now we know that you know all things and do not need anyone to question you. This is why we believe that you came from God. And Jesus answered. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, Jesus answered them, do you now believe? Okay, now, Stacey, how does this prove your point? Because I'm going to now turn it against you. But go ahead. I'll give you a chance. Because right here he's revealing. He's letting them know that he's not going to ask of the Father because the Father is the one that loves them. He just says right above it, he says, I'm talking to you figuratively, but then I will tell you plainly of the Father. Okay. He, when did he fulfill this scripture? There's only one place he could have done it. After his when? resurrection, he opened the scriptures okay. and he showed himself in the Old Testament. He's no, explaining the Father plainly. That's when he 29, did. Twenty nine thirty one says you're wrong. Father himself loves you. Then what is he saying? Talk over you. No, I'm talking. Twenty nine says talking, you're you wrong, Stacy. Stacy, I'm going to say it again. That's what he's 29 saying. Twenty nine says you're wrong. It says now you're speaking plainly. Read that from Scott. This is a progression. Yes, I will now speak plainly of the Father. Plainly. He's going to talk over me. Can you read it for him, Scott? 
His disciples said, "Ah, now you are speaking plainly and not wait, using wait, figurative." They say, "Ah, after your resurrection, you started speaking plainly." Is that what the verse said? No. Now you no, are speaking. He says plainly. that's when he will speak. Let me, of the let me Father. finish it. Now you are speaking plainly and not using figurative speech. Now we know that you know all things and do not need anyone to question you. This is why we believe that you came from God. Now, Scott. Didn't he just say he came from God right yes. there in 27, 28? And yes, didn't the disciples God. say, because you're speaking plainly and not figuratively, now we believe you came from God. So, Stacy, you again took a verse that backfires against you because this is not about the resurrection. They understood now, right now, you're speaking plainly. And because you're not using figurative speech, we now believe you came from God. So now I'm going to ask you a question. Here's my question, because it's plain, Stacy. You went to this passage, not me. I'm going to read 29 one more time so you don't ignore it. 29, 29, 30. His disciples said, ah, now you are speaking plainly. Yeah, and they're not seeing what he's using, saying. Let me read the verse. Not using figurative speech right now. Now we know that you know all things and do not need anyone to question you. This is why we believe that you came from God. So he's speaking plainly, not figuratively. Since you, Stacy, believe Jesus did leave the world and go back to the Father. Okay, he actually did that, not as a plan. He didn't go back to the Father and leave he's the world. He's already fulfilled as a plan. the plan. Of course not. Okay, he's, can I make my point there. before you? You're, you're attacking straw man. Listen to my objection no, before you rush. There's no such thing as a straw man. Quit bringing up that word. Okay, now. That's a little trinity trick. Okay, let's there's try no to say it's a straw man. Yeah, keep talking over me and avoid it. I know this is all you can do. No, you I'm showing you right believe. here. He said, I will okay, not speak so of myself, I make but my the point, Father does you're gonna it. going to keep talking over me. Can I make my point? I know you're scared. It's okay. Let me make no, my you're point. you're ignoring what it actually says. Okay, I will not again. speak, but the Father I'm will. not going to get anywhere if he keeps talking, you know, because he doesn't want to hear what my question is, because he doesn't even know what I'm asking for him to refute. I know he's scared, but be, I'll be gentle. <laughs> Let me try to give you the question before you get animated. I know. I understand. I'll be nice. Hopefully you repent. You don't believe Jesus went to the Father as a plan. He went there in his spiritual body. So now you're stuck because if he went there, not simply as a plan, but as, I don't even know what the term you'd like to use because you don't like to call the Father a person. So I don't know whatever term you use. He went there as an actual conscious being. He went there actually. You're stuck, buddy, because if the going there is the going of an actual living conscious being, then the coming down is the coming down, not of a plan, contrary to your heresy, but of an actual living being coming down to become flesh because he's not speaking figuratively, he's speaking literally. So this passage backfires against you because you don't believe Jesus was there with the Father as an actual conscious being. So no. now refute this, this passage that now backfires against you. Refute it, please. Go ahead. Again, try. The plan is fulfilled when Jesus is, comes. That's not what he said. There's no such thing as the he's still a plan when he's here. That's not the point. The point Good. is he fulfills the Old Testament. That's what word means. A That's word what is he not a person. Said. Scott, can you read for him 26 to 28 again? Because he didn't catch it. And he's again, the one no, I just he said, him, Scott. in that day you will ask. I do not say to you I will ask the Father on your behalf. He's revealing to him who he is. Finish it to 28. Don't stop. Keep reading. Yeah, I came from the Father and have come into the world, and now I'm leaving and I'm going back to the Father. So now he's not going I, back I, to a Trinity. Let he's me just not going back to said. a Trinity. Let me uh, don't. I didn't bring up Trinity. Let me repeat what you just said. You just told him everyone when he was here, he wasn't a plan, and you do believe he left. He fulfilled the plan. Actually left. He actually left. Yes. To go to the Father. Now you're stuck because if he actually left as an actual conscious living being, then the first part means he actually came down as a living conscious being, not simply a plan that became a reality. You're stuck, Stacy. There's no way for you to get around it. Go ahead. Wrong. Try again. Try that, it again. That has nothing to do. He returns invisibly as the Father, which Scripture teaches. That's why he said, look for the sign of... They said, what is the sign of your coming? The apostles knew this. They know who he is. Coming on the clouds well, is, is, is judgment language from the Old Testament. It's the Father wait, wait, I who want judges Israel. 
Stacy, I want everyone to hear what you said because you contradict yourself. You just said to everyone, and it's recorded, he returned invisibly as the father. But I thought you told me Jesus is the man, not the father. It's the father's spirit that dwells him. So is Jesus the father or he's a man and dwelt by the father? Okay, in heaven you have spiritual bodies. Spirit, that's, you're not, that's not visible to us. Um, that's what scripture teaches. The immortal is invisible. 2 Corinthians 4.18 you don't see immortality. It's the spiritual kingdom. That's not what I asked you. Though. Jesus is resurrected in a spiritual body. There's not bodies floating in is heaven. Is that the Father in a spiritual body? Or is that There's Jesus no that physical body? bodies floating in heaven. Uh, that's. I'll refute that in a minute, but you didn't answer the question again. Let me try it again, Stacy. I know I got to repeat myself more than once. When? You said Jesus will return as the Father. So let's get this straight so we can know what you believe, so we can understand. Are you saying Jesus in his resurrected spiritual body, that's the Father as a resurrected spiritual body. That's how we see the Father. That's how I ask you, is he the Father, is Jesus in his resurrected body the Father, or is he that man who's now dwelling with a spiritual body that's indwelt by the Father? Either he's indwelt by the Father or he is the Father, which is it? Well, he had, he's like us. Um, as Paul says, um, so he's going to have some type of body that we can um, uh, be with. So, so the, and the Father's going to dwell Jesus? in him. In that day, there'll be one Lord. There's one okay. Lord. Is that the we Father? You didn't answer space. the question again. Stacey, I'm you didn't answer the question. The, question again. the Father is spirit. The whole point of Jesus okay. is, is to reveal Jesus the Father. Is Jesus in his resurrected body the Father? See, I, I don't know how to say it. This is now the fourth time I'll say it. Uh, the Father is all is is the spirit, period. He's I'm not, not just, he's not not just in question. Jesus. He's in all of us. I'm not asking that. Let me try it a sixth time. I'm explaining it. Is Jesus in his resurrected body the Father or not? No, he's, well, he's, I mean, he's got his Good. own, he's a, he's no, right? Himself, but it's no, the right? Father Spirit in him, how we okay, see the so Father. The Father Spirit is in him, right? And he's born from the, the Father. father. He wasn't born right? from a man and a woman. No, he was okay, born from the we're Father. We're talking about him in heaven. Now you went in back fullness. to the original conception. In fullness, so yeah. The, the Father's in him, right? You said the Spirit. But the Father's Spirit is in you, right? Right. So can I then call you God? Not no. because I'm calling you God, but because the Father's in you? Because that's what you said. Jesus is called God, not because Jesus is God, because it's referring to the Father in him. But you just said to everyone, that same spirit is in you. That means I can call you my Lord and my God too? No. Why not? We're That's your logic. From, we're born from humans and we and we were we were. Where dead. does the Bible say if you're born of humans, then you're disqualified from being called God, even though God's spirit lives in you? Show me that. You can, you can call somebody God. There, so I, I can think call you my Lord and my God and the Father will be okay with it? No, you don't call us God. Absolutely not. Why not? The Father's spirit is in you the same way it's in Jesus. What you, are you talking about? Jesus, um, the glory is to the Father in, in heaven. Um, okay. he, he, the Jesus is, there again, Jesus is made Lord in Christ. That's it. Yeah. There we go. He's then. made Lord in Christ. Christ. Yeah. And the Father reigns through him, and the Father gets the glory. And does the Father reign through you? He reigns, actually reigns through all of us in the new covenant. Good. It is, it uh, is the Father. You. It's about the okay. Father. Good. Say so on. I want everyone to hear it. Like Jesus, the Father's Spirit indwells us if we're believers. Like Jesus, the Father reigns through us. And yet, your argument is, the reason why Jesus is called God is because of the Father in him. That means, according to your logic, since God is in you, the Spirit is in you and reigns through you, I can call you my Lord and my God. Why can't I then? Uh, That's your well, logic. We, Stick we, with weren't, it. we weren't appointed that. What do you mean no, that you are appointed? No, uh, five, no but Colossians yeah. one, Colossians one eighteen. God appoints him that because he's the first resurrection. Colossians one eighteen doesn't talk about Jesus being appointed God, but in Revelation five nine to ten, you will reign as kings over the earth. So you are appointed by God to rule. Therefore, using your logic, God's spirit in Jesus, 
and reigning through Jesus is why he can be called God. Well, that means God's spirit in you, reigning through you means I can now call you God. You can call me God. Why not, Stacy? Be consistent with your theology. That's not the plan. That's not what it says. That's not the plan of God. That's all you got to say? Because he's the firstborn, he, it reigns through him. That's what Colossians 1 says. Where does it say if the Father reigns through you through Jesus, that somehow means you can't be called God like Jesus is? Because I'm going by your logic. Well, there again, the Father is the one called God in Revelations. That's who the God is. He's in Jesus. Are you sure about that? Jesus is the Christ. You sure the Father is called God, not Jesus as well? You sure? Jesus, it says in Revelations uh, 1 and Revelation 3 that uh, the Father is Jesus' is God. Okay. And? 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 What are you going to do with that? Well, you, I'll answer you very easily. This is something that destroys your preterism. This is because, in heaven. Okay, can I answer your question now? Yeah, go ahead. This is why your preterism is also heresy, because you deny that Jesus is a man. You don't believe it because you believe he's a he has a spiritual body. Revelation 22, 16. Let's go. Since you brought it up, let me answer it. I'm going to answer you now. I like you. I'm going to try to answer your questions from Scripture. Revelation 22, 16. Read that for him, Scott. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify to you about these things for the churches. I am the root and the descendant of David, the bright morning star. Now, Scott, I want you to just emphasize, because I know when I ask him, he's not to answer the question, but I'll ask him. But I want you to first emphasize, Scott. Jesus doesn't say, I was. I am right now in heaven, the descendant of David, right? Yeah, it says I am. Okay, in, now go to verb right present tense. Now, I am the root. Five. It doesn't mean I didn't even ask the question yet. Be patient. Go to Revelation 5 5. I know, brother, I understand. Maybe you repent and you'll be a Trinitarian instead of preaching your heresy. But uh, you're a Catholic, five. buddy. Keep it up. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's all you are is a Catholic, part Catholic. Do you believe you the virgin about. birth, by the way? Stacey, I know you're changing subject, but do you believe in the virgin birth? Yes. So do the Catholics. Ha ha, booyah, you're a Catholic no, too. No, I believe in the one true God. Go to Revelation 5.5. Five. Let's not change the subject. One Revelation true God, five. the Father. Let's not change the subject, Stacey. Please control yourself. Stick with the, let me answer your objection. Revelation 5.5. Five. And one of the elders said to me, weep no more. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has conquered so that he can open the scroll and its seven seals. Now watch how Scotty's not going to answer the question. Now, Jesus, even in heaven, is from the tribe of Judah. Jesus, even in heaven, is a descendant of David. How can, Stacy? hopefully you answer the question. Finally, we'll answer a question. How can Jesus still be from the tribe of Judah and be a descendant of David when the tribe of Judah and descendancy implies humanity, physical lineage, which you don't believe about Jesus. Jesus is not a physical man. How can he still be from the tribe of Judah and a physical descendant of David if he's not a man, according to you? Can you please answer that at least? Okay, he's the root and the offspring. That means he's the foundation promised in Genesis 3. How can he 3. be the offspring? He is the found, he's the offspring because he is born after David from the lineage. But he's not a man in heaven, right? He's a man with a spiritual body. Oh, so he, he's a human being. Well, yeah, but it's, you got a spiritual okay, body. Good. Oh, that's invisible. Fine. Okay, you, yeah, I don't yeah. care about the invisible. So he's still a man. That's what firstborn means. Yes. No, it doesn't mean that. We can, you can ask me that later. I just want to make sure. So you do believe he's still a man? Um, yeah, yes. He, yeah, he's like us. Why are you hesitating? He's yes like no? us. We will be like him, it says. Okay, so you, you do believe he's still a man? Yes. Good. So because he's still a man, the father will still be his God. Because according to scripture, when Jesus becomes flesh, the father becomes his God. Where's the problem? Well, the father's always his God. No, he hasn't always been his God. He's been his God from his mother's womb. Psalm 22, verse 10. He's, he's in heaven. He's still his God. Because he's still a man, which you just agreed with me. Yeah, but it, there's, Thank no, you. There's, <laughs> no, there's no such thing as a God the Son. It's an invention. It's no okay, the Bible. Know that, you Here they are in that. heaven, and you have Jesus still under the Father, who is the God. Yeah, because he's still a man. You disagree with me. He's still a man. Eternity, and he's last for eternity. When's this God the Son going to show up? 
Okay, well, let me because hold on. Not in the Bible. You're looking for the exact words? God the Son, right? Yeah, when's this God okay. the Son going to Here's show my up? challenge to you, Stacy. Here's my challenge to you, front everyone. Show me the words, exact words. Listen to my challenge. God the Father in the Old Testament. I want those exact words. Show me. Now, don't attack straw man. Listen to my challenge again. Go to, go to, show uh, me in, go let me, to let me Isaiah 63. Okay. Go to Isaiah 63 and let's watch. You didn't listen to my challenge. You just talked over me. You didn't listen to my challenge. My challenge isn't to show me where Isaiah says you are our father. Try to listen a little better because listen to what you said. See, that's why I said listen because I know what you're going to say. Isaiah 63, 16. Isaiah 64, verse 8, Malachi 2, 10. None of right. which answered my question. So listen a little better. You just argued. You said that God the Son, those words never appear in the Bible. You're, ex you're looking for exact phraseology. I'm now throwing it back at you. Show me in the Old Testament the exact phraseology, God the Father, the exact phraseology, God the Father. You see, my challenge is clear. Quote the God verse. God is called the Father in the Old Testament. So can you find and God so the Father? And so when you get in the New Testament, he's called okay. God the Father. Can you at least answer the question? God and he's can their you find father. God the Father in the Old Testament, yes or no? God is said to be the one father. So that's not that's, my challenge. I'm applying your inconsistent objection. No, that's what it says. He's he's there. Can you father. answer? Yes or you, no? Oh Lord, are our father. Yes. Okay. Can that's you answer the objection, Stacy? Or you're wasting my time. Do you find the phraseology God the Father? Exact words in the Old Testament. Yes or no? It's simple. Yes or no. It don't have to say God the Father. Nor does the God Bible need is to say God the Son. Right God back at is you. recognized as the Father. Nor does the Bible need to say God the Son for that to be the true. Word right son, back at the you, word Stacey. Son destroys a thought of God. It means born from. A son is not as living as long as a father. You're wrong. You don't it's know an oxymoron. You're wrong. It already destroys okay, your Stacey, argument. Let me answer when that you're objection. Son, you destroy the you argument. You want me to already. answer your objection, or you want to keep ranting? Let me answer now. Destroy your objection. I'm going to. I'm going to refute you what you just said. But first, I want everyone to hear how he admit the Old Testament doesn't need to say God the Father in those exact words for it to be true. Booyah, because then that means I don't need to show you the words God the Son for the Bible to teach Jesus is God, who's the Son, right back at you. But now let me correct your error. Let me correct your error. It is a lie to say that the Son doesn't live as long as the Father because you are not a father until you have a son. And I'm going to use Scott as an example. Scott, do you have children, brother? No, sir. Okay. What about Jody? Somebody's got to have kids. Jody, you have kids? You got kids. You I know, but I don't want to use my, me as an example. Nobody? Okay, I'm okay. All right. All right. Now, my firstborn daughter, Stacy, listen how it's going to backfire against you. She's 11. My firstborn. I was not a father until I had a child. Before a child, I may have existed, but not as a father. Therefore, my fatherhood is dependent on and is just as old as my firstborn. So as a father... I'm only as old as my firstborn. I'm 11 years old as a father because until I have a child, I am not a father. Therefore, if you ask me, Sam, how old are you as a dad? I'm only 11 years old because I can only be a father when I have an actual child. So the firstborn cannot be younger than the father because without a firstborn, there is no father. So it refutes your irrational argument. Well, were you alive before your daughter was born? That is a ridiculous not as a father, argument. No. Not it as doesn't a father, matter. No. It doesn't matter if you're yes, late your father. You were you alive believe, before Casey? your daughter. That was a okay. ridiculous Let me answer analogy. Your Can I answer your objection? Yes. Okay. Do you believe God was the father before creation? Yes or no, Stacy? God, yes. God was, he, yes. Wait, he wait, was. say it again. It's because him. this is music to my ears. Say it again. God, the one spirit, was here alone was he the by father himself. before creation? Alone, but by himself for creation. Yes. Okay. Everyone heard it. Scott, you heard it, right? Yes, sir. He just admit God was the father before creation. You cannot be an actual father unless you're a father to someone. So who was the father, the father of before creation? He doesn't have to be called father. He's, he's you the just God. Said he was, though. You just said he was. I said God was here by himself before creation. No, I asked you, was God 
the father before creation. Was he the father? You said it yes. It doesn't matter what his title is. What's he your was next by question? Himself. He was here What's and by question, himself. Casey? Here's What's your my next question. question. Jesus always has a God in scripture. Not always. No, he only had a God when he became flesh. Psalm 22, 10. Uh, Read from Psalm 22, 10. Read it from. There's nowhere. It, it, that's ridiculous. So he was a God. Okay, he, can then you he, read Psalm 22, 10? That, Stacey, is, that, that, that absolutely makes no 10? sense. Stacey, can we read Psalm 22, 10 to see how ridiculous it is? On you was I cast from my birth and from my mother's womb. You have been my God. So Be not when far has the father been Jesus as God, Scott? From my mother's womb. Now, Stacy, show me where the father was Jesus as God before Jesus became flesh. He can't. That's the point. He's, no, he's that's our not God when we become I'm going to say Jesus was there. He, yeah, he, this is exactly telling you. This is a prophecy of Jesus' birth. Yes. All of what a Proverbs 30. Jesus, all of Scripture on Jesus is prophecy in the Old Testament. Can we go to Proverbs 30, dude? Because now I'm going to show you where the son was already existing before he became flesh. Proverbs 30, verse 3. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear that. 30. Yeah, open up Proverbs 30 for my good friend Stacy, because he says there is no son in the Old Testament. I'm about to refute him now. Proverbs 30, and as I do, let me get some water. Proverbs 30. One second. Read for him just verse 3. <laughs> I, I have not learned wisdom, nor have I knowledge of the Holy One. Now, Scott, can you show him the interlinear that the word Holy One is Kadoshim? Proverbs 30. We are Proverbs 30. Verse 3. Verse three. Is, word, is it Kadosh or Kadoshim? Kedoshim. And it's, can you show them if it's plural or singular? It's masculine plural. Okay. Now, that's why if you can, switch for him to the New Revised Standard Version real quickly. Yeah. I don't have a New Revised Standard in front of me. I guess I'll go to, uh, oh, Bible Hub has it. Yep. Probably. <clears throat> Let's see. Looking for the NRSB. So I don't want to think I'm making stuff up and, you know, so. Did you say new revised or new American? New revised standard version. I'm not seeing it here. I don't have a copy in front of me. BibleGateway.com, it's there. BibleGateway.com. Okay. Let's try that. Mm -hmm. So many versions. That's okay. No rush. I'm, I can be here all day. Don't worry. All right. NRSV, Proverbs 33. I have not learned wisdom, nor have I attained the, to the knowledge of the Holy One. No, that's not New Revised Standard Version. Are you sure? Uh, you maybe mean? I didn't hit update. You hit NIV. Mm, it says NRSV. It's got to be Holy Ones. Hang on. Yeah. That's my no script. Yeah, you're a new international version. All right. NRSB. Okay. Here we go. Now it switched. I have not learned wisdom, nor have I knowledge of the holy ones. Okay, so it's plural, right? Yes. Now, I'm pick, uh, here, I'm only using this not because I'm trying to appeal authority, because scholars can be wrong. But I just want to show people it's not my opinion here. I want you to see this. Can you see this? Yes. The book? Okay. Now, let me show you. I'm going to give you the title. This is, okay, and he's not a Christian. He's not a Trinitarian. He doesn't believe in Jesus. And I'm only using it to show that what I'm saying is not something I made up. The Hebrew Bible, a translation with commentary, Robert Alter, the writings. He's not a Christian. He's not a Trinitarian. He doesn't believe in Jesus. The word Kadoshim, knowledge of the holy ones, because you're going to see where I'm going with this. While an exegetical tradition, going back, this is page 445, by the way, page 445, right? While an exegetical tradition 
going back to the Middle Ages, understood Kadoshim as the Holy One. The Hebrew noun is plural. Now, this is going to respond to Stacy's fallacious appeal to plural majesty in case he wants to appeal to it. It is true that the most common name for God, Elohim, is plural in form, though singular in meaning. But the evidence, let me repeat, but the evidence that Kedoshim works in the same way is not altogether convincing that Kedoshim does not function as a singular. So because he's not a Trinitarian, doesn't believe Jesus, he says, the most likely reference would be to angelic beings. He's stuck. He's got to say it's angelic beings. But now I'm going to show you it's not angelic beings. So I want everyone to see we establish it's plural. I have no knowledge of the holy ones, holy ones that actually exist at that time. Now read verse 4 to see who these holy ones are. You can read in any translation. Oops. Who has ascended to heaven and come down? Who has gathered the wind in the hollow of the hand? Who has wrapped up the waters in a garment? Who has established all the ends of the earth? What is the person's name and what is the name of the person's child? Surely you know. Now that's the New Revised Standard Version. Literally, it's what is his name and what is the name of his son, if you know. Stacy, you just saw he's referring to holy ones who are actually existing at that time, present, who are sovereign over creation, who do things that are incomprehensible. It's not a prophecy. It's what they do now and these holy ones that exist at this time. Stacy, please tell us who the son is. His son is the promise in Genesis. He does not. There's no promise here. This is not a promise. It's not this, a prophecy. This, this it's not about prophecy. beings that exist. This is prophecy about the son. It doesn't say. No, it isn't. Yes. You're going to take no, one isn't. verse in the Bible and ignore the entire Bible. This is what Trinitarians Stacey, do. You've this ignored is not everything a I've prophecy. said tonight, and you're the one asking all the questions. You've okay, ignored you everything I've said. I'll answer. Okay, just admit you don't have an answer. You ask the me. The Father sure. is the God in Jesus. This always says that. You have not given an answer yet why it doesn't say, where's God the Son at anywhere? Yeah, I just showed you. Jesus is God, and he's the Son. Where's God the, the Son Lord. in Jesus? Show me where God the Son is. How, how can Jesus, Jesus be? Let me answer your question. How can Jesus be God the Son in himself when he is God the Son? What are you talking about, dude? God the Son was born from the Holy Spirit. If you're not the Holy Spirit, you can't use him. You can't pick and choose when you want. What are you That's talking where, about? What you're you? being a modalist. Okay, you're being a modalist me. more than anybody else. Stacy, there's no God can you that came make a coherent memory. question? Because I have no idea what you're talking about. What does if the Holy Spirit a, if there is a creating? God son before, okay, let me repeat myself. The, before his talking. birth. No, there you go. You won't answer none of my questions. I will There's answer no if you God can to, make a coherent question. No I don't get your where question. God the Son entered Mary because you can't use Holy Spirit. You can't use the Father. Who's using the Holy Spirit? I don't believe God the Son's Holy Spirit. That's why you don't know what you're talking about. Right. So, so show, me, me. show me where God the Son went into Mary. Jesus is the Son who is God that became flesh. Go to John 1.1, 1, 1, John 1.14. Don't, don't tell me how to answer your question. Just like you don't have a verse that says, God the Father in the Old Testament. And can you show me where it says, the Father entered Mary and took flesh from her? The show Father, me the word Father. The Father uh, hovered Mary and put his spirit in Mary. No, I didn't ask you that. Show me the where it says, the Father is the one, entered Mary the Father and is the one spirit. The Father is the one spirit. His Holy Spirit, singular, okay, is so what he put into Mary. That's why she's called. That's why he's called Son of God. Not no, that's son not of why Holy he's called Spirit. Son of God. He's now, called Stacey, Son of God because he's born. Are you from preaching, the Father. or do you want me to answer you, Stacy? You want me to answer your lies? I will. Or you Go want to ahead, preach? Through? Answer. Okay. Number one, you didn't answer my question. The Father hovering over Mary is not the Father entering Mary to become flesh. And even with your argument, let me now show you why you no, don't even no, understand. Don't become flesh. Can I make Go my ahead. point? Con being conceived by the Holy Spirit refutes you. It doesn't say the Holy Spirit became flesh from her. It says she conceived from the Holy Spirit. But you just told us it's the Holy Spirit in Jesus. So you can't have your cake and eat it too. Did the Holy Spirit enter Mary to become flesh? Or did the Holy Spirit create that human flesh and physical body. Right. The, yeah, created the body. Yeah, right, Absolutely. What? Created so the body. That passage refutes you. because no, it it If you're created, you're not a God. 
Yet I make no my Son of God. There's no Son of God to intermarry. It's not, if, you're Luke created, if you're created, not you're not. You're, if you're created, you're not a God's Son. Go to Luke 135. Say, so you can keep preaching to, to the walls. We go to Luke 135. Show up backfires against you. Luke 135. Same thing. Go Read ahead. it first, Scott. Read it first. And the angel answered her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. Okay, so the Holy Spirit comes upon her to do what? Go to Matthew 118 and 120 to tie it in. Because now he thinks it's actually making his case and it's destroying his theology. But we'll look at it. Matthew 118 and 20. Now the birth of Jesus Christ took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. From the Holy Spirit. So the child conceived in her was from the Holy Spirit, right? Yes. Right, Scott? No, right. let me talk to Scott for me, because if I talk to you, you're going to go into a rant. <laughs> now, verse 20, read it for him. But as he considered these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. So notice the Holy Spirit did not enter her to become flesh. It's the Holy Spirit that created the physical body, human nature of the Son. But he wants his cake and eat it too, because I want everyone to hear what he's saying. The Spirit is in Jesus, and the Spirit is the Father, and that's the divine part of Jesus. But this passage doesn't say the Spirit entered Mary. The Spirit became flesh from Mary. The Spirit took on a body from Mary. Father entered Mary. The Father took flesh from Mary. It doesn't say that, so it refutes you because it shows the Spirit is not the one who became flesh. So now, what do you believe exactly? Is it the spirit who's in uh, okay. that body, this is fulfilling or is that body the Old Testament. The this is fulfilling the Old Testament. What does it say? Behold, my What's servant, uh, uh, my chosen one, in whom my soul delights. I will put my spirit upon him. Good. That is Let's go. The with that Father one. talking, putting his spirit singular. Beautiful. Upon Christ. The okay, man. Now you just proved That's my point. What all the prophecies okay, say. I know. Can I answer you now? Okay. When it says my spirit. Is that the Father saying, I'm going to put myself on him? Yes. Wait, wait. So it's a tautology. So really, according to you, Isaiah 42, 1 is saying, Behold my servant, and I'm going to put myself on him. My spirit is himself. He's a spirit. So, so then why didn't he simply say, I will put myself on him? That's how they use it in Scripture. They say his spirit or my spirit. No, I didn't ask you that. If you're saying the spirit when is God's the Father. at work, when God's at work, it says spirit. Just like when he when God created the earth and his spirit hovered the waters. It's him creating. That's not it's proving your spirit. point, that's proving my point. The spirit is distinct from God and in union with God. So that's Absolutely not helping you. Okay? God. So I ask you again. No I want everyone to hear what you believe. All. I want everyone to hear what you believe, the blasphemy that you're trying to spouse. The, father, the Spirit does what the Father says. That's his oh, wait, arm. Wait, but that's the Father. So the Father's telling himself what to do? No, the Spirit is an extension of the Father, just like you tell your arm what but to do. But is the Spirit the Father? Yes, it's his Spirit. Yes. It's so the his. Father is telling himself what to do and sending himself and commanding himself. He's not telling himself what to do. The Spirit does what the Father says because it's saying. But how can the Spirit himself. do what the Father says when the Spirit is the Father? Beep, 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 beep. Come on. Uh, when, you're, when your brain tells your arm what to do, you're not talking. It just does it. It's part of, it's part of himself. But since God is not a physical being with a physical Absolutely. brain. He's so omnipresent. Now, let's try it again. So the Father is talking to himself, sending himself, commanding himself, and obeying himself. The Father is the Spirit absolutely talking here about what the prophecy. No, no. When the it's Father a, it's puts a prophecy, the Spirit. It's a prophecy of Jesus coming. When the place. Father puts this the Spirit fulfilled. on himself. That's the Father putting himself on himself. No, sending he put himself Spirit on a man. Yeah, I know it repeats all your teaching. So it's a man. He's putting his Spirit on a man. I know That's not what I asked you. See, I, don't, I know you don't want to talk about it because it destroys everything you're, you're, you're saying. You're attacking strawman. You're attacking mods. This guy is wasting my time. He's anointed. He's a man okay. anointed. I'm not That's talking the about point. the man, Stacy. Stop with the strawman. You do it with every He's person you debate. There is no such thing as a strawman. The father put his spirit on Jesus, but that's 
the father is the spirit. So that means the father put himself on the man, sent himself on the man, and commanded himself, stop attacking straw man. That's true. Absolutely. But it's true. Okay, say it again. He's the all in all. He's well, the all in all. Everyone hear it. So the father sent himself, placed himself, and commanded himself. Say yes again. Don't He's be ashamed. He's not commanding of himself. He's not commanding himself. I didn't, you're He's attacking the man. Put the man aside. The spirit. The father sent the spirit. Commands All right, the let's spirit. wrap this up. It's been an hour and 30 minutes. <laughs> yeah, I thought Nothing so. Yeah. All right. No, yeah, you won't you won't, yeah, you won't discuss. Saying, may you, you won't discuss my listen, doctor. you won't discuss my verses. Yeah, may you may you, you want to sit there and grill and twist and turn. You don't okay, admit that the Father is the only God. No, no straw man, dude. No. You got a Christ. You will not you will not discuss the Christ. You 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 simply ignore everything that you're justified? saying. I actually refuse. You will not. You do like everybody else does. Basically, you want to ignore that the Father is the go, God. You, the, if you gotta go, go. If you want to talk, we'll talk. No ranting. You want to talk, we'll talk. You want to run, run, but don't rant. You want to no. talk, talk. You I, asked the questions this whole time, and it's been an no, hour I didn't. And a half. I answered your questions. No, you, you didn't answer, answer my question. question. You you dodged my question and went to another question. question. All right. Dodged. All right, friends, this is, uh, this is recorded, as uh, Sam keeps pointing out. People can decide for themselves yep, who yeah. answered whose questions. I think both sides have had a good uh, opportunity to uh, state their position and give the biblical evidence. We'll let the facts decide. Everybody should uh, search the scriptures daily as noble Bereans. Test all things, hold fast to what is good, and test the spirits to see if they're from God. That's the, that's the uh, duty that we all have as those who claim to be followers of Christ. Uh, this is a good place to stop. I think we might uh, have another discussion some other time. We're willing to host it, Jody and I, if there's, uh, if there's interest. And uh, Jody, what, how are you enjoying the fireworks? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I love the passion of both Sam and Stacy. I mean, they came in, I, maybe a little bit, well, actually, you know, talking over each other, uh, but we need to try to avoid that. If we do it again, try not to, you know, answer the questions, but uh, I do appreciate both of them. Uh, I love both of them. I think they're both my friends. And, you know, this is the great thing about the Bible. We can discuss it and still be friends at the end. So sure. please uh, subscribe to our channel, uh, Disciples of YHWH. In Christ, please, please uh, pray for us, and you know, uh, pray that God leads us and guides us, and uh, pray that uh, you know, just God will use us for His glory. And we appreciate everyone on the YouTube live for joining us. And God bless. Hey, Stacy, do you have a, a blog or a YouTube channel or something where people can no, find out more? No, you just have to go to my Facebook. Okay, Stacy's on Facebook. And uh, Sam's uh, information will be in the description box. Uh, check out Shamunian on YouTube for more great content. And uh, come visit us. And we thank you all for watching. Thanks, uh, thanks to our guests for a spirited, passionate debate. We appreciate your, your passion for God. I will say if uh, they, they can just type my name in YouTube and they can see all my debates. All right. I'll put, it, I'll put your name in the description box so it's typed correctly and people can find you. And uh, thank you, guys. Uh, great discussion. And we'll see you all next time. God bless you. Good night.